the theme of our next lecture is identity and intercultural communication. During our lecture we will define intercultural communication, list and summarize the six identities of humans, discuss how intercultural communication affects interpersonal in relationships. The outline of our lecture is first identity and ethnocentrism, second multicultural identity, and the third one is prejudice and discrimination. What is identity and ethnocentrism? Identity plays a key role in intercultural communication, serving as a bridge between culture and communication. It is through communication with our family, friends, sometimes with people from different cultures, that we come to understand ourselves and our identity. And it is through communication that we express our identity to others. Knowing about our identity is particularly important in intercultural interaction. Identities emerge when communication messages are exchanged between persons. This means that presenting our identities is not a simple process. Does everyone see you as you see yourself? Probably not. Different identities are emphasized depending on whom we are communicating with and what the conver conversation is about. In a social conversation with someone we are interacted to, our gender identity is probably more important to us than our ethnic or national identities. And our communication is probably most successful when the person we are talking with confirms the identity we think is most important at the moment. Our identities are formed through communication with others, but social forces related to history, economics and politics also have a strong influence. Many parents give a great deal of thought to a name for their unborn child, who is already part of society through his or her relationship to the parents. It is very difficult to change involuntary identities rooted in ethnicity, gender or physical ability, so we cannot ignore the ethnic, socio-economic or racial positions from which we start our identity journey. Let's try to imagine two children on a train that stops at the station. Each child looks out from a window and identifies their location. One child says that they are in front of the door for the women's room. The other says that they are in front of the door for the men's room. Both chil children see and use labels from their sitting position to describe where they are. Both are on the same train but describe where they are differently. And like the two children where we are positioned by our background and by society influences how and what we see and most important what it means. We often begin our life with gendered identities. When newborns arrive, they may be greeted with clothes in either blue or pink. To establish a gender identity for a baby, visitors may ask if it is a boy or a girl. But gender is not the same as biological sex. This distinction is important in understanding how our views on biological sex influence gender identities. We communicate our gender identity and popular culture tells us what it means to be a man or woman. For example, some activities are considered more masculine or more feminine. As we age, we tap into cultural notions of how someone our age should act, look and behave that is we establish an age identity. 
age is also one aspect of our identity. Cultures view and treat people of different ages in different ways. For example, in Asian cultures, getting old is seen as positive. Elderly people are respected and they are cared for by their children. In some European cultures, however, not all, all elderly people are highly respected. In many cases, they may live separate from the younger generation and feel lonely. Racial identities are based to some extent on physical characteristics, but they are also constructed in fluid social contexts. The important thing to remember is that the way people construct these identities and think about race influences how they communicate with others. One's ethnic identity reflects a set of ideas about one's own ethnic group membership. It typically includes several dimensions. Self-identification, knowledge about the ethnic culture, such as tradition, customs, values, behaviors, and feeling about belonging to a particular ethnic group. Ethnic identity often involves a common sense of origin and history which may link members of ethnic groups to distant cultures in Asia, Europe, Latin America and other locations. Ethnic identity thus having a sense of belonging to a particular group and knowing something about the shared experience of group members. We all have a physical ability identity because we all have varying degrees of physical capabilities. We are all handicapped in one way or another by our height, weight, sex or age and we all need to work to overcome these conditions. And our physical ability, like our age, changes over time. Religious identity is an important dimension of many people's identities as well as a common source of intercultural conflict. Often religious identity gets confused with a racial ethnic identity, which means it can be problematic to view religious identity simply in terms of belonging to a particular religion. Today, a growing number of people do not have clear racial, ethnic or national identities. These are people who live on the borders between various cultural groups. While they may feel torn between different cultural traditions, they also may develop a multicultural identity. Multicultural identity, an identity that transcends one particular culture and feel equally at home in several cultures. Prejudice is an unfounded attitude towards an out-group based on a comparison with one's in-group. In other words, it is a negative attitude towards a cultural group based on a little or no experience. Prejudice is a prejudging without knowledge or examination of the available information. Discrimination is the resulting behavior of a negative attitude toward an outgroup. Ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation or other characteristics.